Hi, it's Pastor Smith again. I get to be back with you and, and interview the Teacher of the Week. And our Teacher of the Week is Mr. Mel Mockamer. I think most of you have known him or have heard him at some point, don't you, Mr. Mockamer? <laughs> yes, uh, it's uh, pretty likely. <laughs> uh, so this is just kind of get-to-know-you session, even though a lot of people already know you. But uh, what made you become a, a Lutheran teacher? Well, I went to a Lutheran elementary school, and I really enjoyed it. Um, my parents were very, you know, very regular with taking us to church and so on, so that just became mm -hmm. part of what we did. And originally, I always wanted to be a pastor. Okay. And actually, when we were at Concordia, you know, and that's where I met Mrs. Mockmer, um, I wanted, I was on pastoral track, and uh, when we started dating, she said, I'm not marrying a pastor, and then I... Uh, <laughs> and then I, that, that and the fact that I failed my first Greek class, I decided I probably should go a different way. And music was always something that I really loved. So it was pretty easy to make that switch. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Now, I'm gonna, how did you get interested in the organ? Um, we're of an age where you and I, you know, we're kind of the low end of the bottom feeders on the organ players. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot to come after us. And but how did you get interested in that instrument? Because it's a very, very unique instrument. Well, I, you know, I started, I started piano lessons when I was like in second grade or something like that. And it was kind of a slow start. But after I got going with it, I got an, an, a good teacher. I really enjoyed it. And right about that time, around fifth, sixth grade, the school that we were attending built a whole new campus mm -hmm. um, and uh, moved into uh, a more of a... Uh, uh, rural area outside of St. Joe and uh, we watched that go up and when the the uh, church was finished there was a pipe organ being installed and every week when we'd go to church I could see you know what was happening and uh, all the new pipes that were going up and so on my mom actually helped to work in the office um, typing up the newsletter so when she would do that my brother and I would come and we went up to the balcony when they were working okay we helped them pick up you know, pipe sleeves and throw them away. I sat on the bench next to the guy who was voicing the organ. Turns out that that company that put that organ in is the one who, um, uh, the the guy who's maintained our organ here. That's his oh, company. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Abear and Sons. So I met the uh, Paul Abear there. Didn't okay. Didn't know anything yeah. about it till I got here. Yeah. But I of... just was enthralled with it, and our organist let me come up and play it and gave me a few pointers and I played yeah. for chapel when I was in sixth grade for the first time and just loved it. Okay. Well, that, it's just kind of an interesting, like I said, it's a fantastic instrument, but it's, it's a different thing than most because mm -hmm. of the way you can voice everything and it, it is, it's kind of funky actually. <laughs> so, uh, now you direct our choirs here, mm -hmm. pretty much all of them except for the kindergartners. Yeah, for right? the most part. Yep. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me ask you this. What is your greatest joy? In, in directing choirs? Well, you know, it doesn't really matter what age level, um, how large or how small. It's just, uh, it's just really fun um, listening to how, like for kids, for instance, how they sing and working with, their, with them on tone and, and how to sing together and so on and listening to that transformation of going from individual voices becoming a group. And, uh, and then the other thing that I love about it is that, uh, well, we had an example this week. We recorded with the first and second grade choir on the first piece that they've really gotten learned, and they just love it. They just <laughs> love it, and it's so, much fun to, uh, it's so much fun to direct them when you know that they just love, love what they're doing. Yeah, that first grade group and second grade group, they're, they're very enthusiastic, this group. Yes, uh, they are. You know what they like and you know what they don't like. Yep. <laughs> and you know, and Yubilate is the same way. There's, you know, they, and there's there's pieces that they don't really care for as much as others, but they they still enjoy singing it and they enjoy, you know, sounding good. I think. I think they, and and that's one thing that's nice about our situation now is they can't sing in person in church, so we have to record it. But they can hear themselves in the recording, which they yeah. don't ever get the chance to do. And how have they liked hearing themselves? You well, had the first recording like two weeks ago, I think it was. Yeah, and um, and that one was really fast. 
sometimes you don't realize the how fast things are going until you hear the recording because you're so used to doing it and you're, yeah. you're in the moment. But um, there were a number of them. Um, I had a couple parents say they were they really enjoyed hearing themselves because they don't ever get to mm -hmm. hear it. And then a couple of them will say, "Oh my gosh, we didn't really sound as good as I thought we did." You know, that well, that's, that, that kind of helps the coaching a little bit, doesn't <laughs> exactly. it? With that? I mean, because now you can look at them and say, "Oh, see, you do need to listen to me at this <laughs> point." That that can be good. Uh, I want to switch gears just yep. a tad, okay? And that is, uh, I know some of your, your sons are somewhat musical. <laughs> I say that in jest because they're actually very musical. Both of them are. Uh, do you want to just talk about your family a little bit? And, yeah. and your wife as well, of course. Sure. You don't want to leave Sue out. Well, you know, we're, we're a musical family. You know, she's, uh, she and I did flute uh, we, when we met in, at Concordia. You know, she would play. Uh, sometimes we did, uh, you know, solos with the harpsichord or duets and things. Um, but then when the when the boys were born, we always have music playing, Christmas music. You know, during that time of the year, we'd have uh, records of various types and styles. Whenever we went on a vacation, I would find some some classic, um, what was probably a cassette that we had when we were in college, and I'd get the CD and we'd listen to it in the car. Okay. So they hence they liked uh, a lot of the stuff that we liked growing up, <laughs> but. Um, as they, uh, as they got older, I know Matt had said, the only reason I'm taking lessons is because of who my parents are. And then now he's, uh, you know, playing the organ and, and uh, played the trombone real well, the, the bass in high school. He loved it, you know, and is, you know at, at Concordia Seminary in, uh, in Fort Wayne. And then, um, and then Joel has uh, gone, he's gone a little different way. They're both, they both do a lot of things for, uh, do, for I, I do want to say, if you don't know, uh, the oldest son, Matt, is actually a very accomplished composer. Yes. Um, where his pieces are not easy for you always to learn. No, <laughs> no, they're not. Um, they require a little bit of practice sometimes. And then a few of them are, are much more accessible. But uh, they both are really composers. The difference between the two is the style. Um, our younger one, Joel, is more into contemporary things, uh, um, just... Um, worship music for contemporary worship music things like that but he doesn't write any of them down mats are all on mm -hmm. paper joel does his on the computer he actually has done music for various tv programs there's been some of his music that's been used for in pga golf broadcasts and cbs's football broadcasts and things like that the um, final or the uh, uh, march madness okay had some things there so just uh, i don't ask yeah. me where they are because I probably heard them and didn't know they were his. Well, yeah, it's kind of humbling when your kids uh, start to surpass you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I understand that. Trust me. I understand that greatly. Uh, we're going to start wrapping this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I enjoy talking about music with you. You know that anyway because I do ask you a lot of things. So we could go on and, and everybody else is. Yeah, I know you do. And, uh, everybody else is saying, oh, we don't want to hear more of that. But, you know, that's what we do when we get together, Mel. Uh, but anything you would like to say? Just kind of in closing about this congregation, about music, about life in general, about the importance of our school. I, I'm not going to guide you. Just what do you want to leave us with? Well, um, the, the one biggest thing, and this week having um, the accreditation team be here and there's been you know, conversations with them, one of, the thing that I, one of the things that has been such a big blessing and virtually the entire time we've been here has been the the connection of the church and the school and how they work yeah. together for the same goal. The school is is very important to church members and the church is very important to kids in the school. And uh, when it comes to music, um, I you know I as I think about it now as I've been in teaching longer. I mean this is my 40th year already, um, and. Little by little, what I realize is that the singing that we do in church, in choir, and stuff, almost all of it's sacred music. And it's, you know, it's the word of God in song. And I just see that as being so important um, for the word yeah. getting, becoming part of you. We hear stories all the time about 98-year-old people who are not really communicating and so on, but if you come and have worship with them yep. um, they can sing parts of the liturgy along with them yeah otherwise they don't communicate at all 
And a lot of the things they'll sing are things that they learned when they were really little. It is. And, and the beautiful part of that, as you were saying, the church and the school together, is that we have one message, and that's Christ crucified yeah. for us, right? Yes. And that plays out in the music we sing, the hymns we sing, the choirs that you direct. And so that, it is a beautiful thing. It it's is. a beautiful thing. Uh, well, I'm not sure how long. This is longer than normal, I think, <laughs> but that's okay. We, we need to stretch our minds a little bit. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Mockamer for being here, congratulate him on being Teacher of the Week, and most importantly say, uh, you know, what a gift we have in the people of God here and the de different talents we have. So we thank you, Mr. Mockamer, and we'll see you again soon with another one of these videos. The Lord be with you.